Uh, start of spring practice is on Wednesday, and uh, and that uh, this time of year is is when you try to really focus on just putting your team together, and it's also a time that we need to develop leaders. And as a coaching staff, we uh, sat down and we just talked about just some of the goals, some objectives that we try to get accomplished this spring. And one thing we talked about, the number one, and it's very key, is to go build us a football team and a team with uh, team chemistry. And I just felt like that uh, last year we just didn't play together as a team and just had a team meeting, you know, got all the players back uh, last night. And I just talked about, you know, within a team there's just – there's different clicks and you know you got this click here and you got a click and in order to just become together as a team trust has to be built and a team has to come together and that's what we never did we still had these clicks that we were dealing with and I said at the end of the day when you come together as a team and you win as a team then everybody get the praise it's not just one guy then everybody's able to stand up and there's and there's a lot of praise and there's a lot of uh, things that can happen within this team. You know, the second thing we talked about is just pride within this program, just representing this program, rep representing this team with pride. And it's it's an investment, and it's the time, it's the energy, and it's the effort that you're willing to put into it. And just, you know, I think the last season, at the, you know, the last game I just talked about, there's just not enough pride where guys just don't feel like that there's the investment is not there, the energy is not there, the time and the effort's not there. And we just got to build it this uh, this spring. Talk about just a, a physical and mental attitude by just working hard. And anything you get, no one ever gives you anything. It's all about just hard work. And, and guys have to understand that it's about us just working together and then just building a closeness within the team and build confidence. <clears throat> you have to have confidence within the players, and we got to build that confidence. And, you know, as I was telling the guys, I said that, you know, when you sign on here, you sign on to win championships, and that has not happened. You sign on to where you say, hey, we just got to restore this program, get it back, headed back in the right direction. That hasn't happened. But the confidence, it, it's almost like that big dog on the porch. And, you know, what happens is when that big dog jumps off the porch and he gets bitten, he's no longer the big dog anymore. And we're no longer the big dog. You know, we've been bitten. So when will this dog rise back up and become who we should be? And But it's all about just building that confidence within our players. And then we talk about just improve our fundamentals. Each and every day it's all about just getting better. Where it's just taking that step where we have to get better. And the only way that can happen is you got to – it's all about coaching fundamentals and where our coaching staff has to understand is it's about the fundamentals. And it's, it's about, you know, when we talk about taking a short, a six to eight inch step, that's what it is. It's a six to eight inch step, and that's what it's going to be about. But we still have a ways to go. But the great thing about it, we lose a lot of players. You know, last season, I think defensively, our six or seven starters are going to be going offense two or three. But it, it's all about the players within this program where they understand now it's their time to step up. And it's their time, their time to start moving in the right direction. <laughs> But we got to build leaders. Got to be. It's not only within the senior class. If there's a junior who's an outstanding leader, he should just step up because it's it's going to be leadership. It's going to be just team chemistry and just us working together, working hard, and, and just getting it headed back in the right direction. Great thing about spring practice is is the only thing that counts is the number of days of practices. And is you know we're not going out there. The only people that we have to worry about just getting better and competing against is ourselves and just making ourselves better. <clears throat> Raise your hand. Start up front with on your left, Brian. Charlie, we'll just we'll just jump right into the most uh, the most interesting topic. Quarterback. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Quarterback. Uh, <laughs> what uh, what do you want to see out of Tyrone and Gerard? Are you are you are you are you and the coaches sort of pitting them against each other, or uh, how would you describe how y'all are setting it up for them? Well, Brian, it has to be comp uh, competition at every position and at the quarterback position. You know, I, 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 Tyrone was our starter last season. Uh, Gerard, we had a chance to redshirt him. But, you know, going into the spring practice that we're going to give them equal reps, give them a chance to go compete against each other. And uh, now I, I just say this, in, in fairness to Tyrone, you, you know, you look at us last year, we struggled on offense. You know, it's trying to put together an offensive line. I said each and every week we squeezing every ounce out of it. You know, we weren't able to go run the football because you just couldn't open up holes. So, you know, Tyrone's placed back at the quarterback position. But he, this spring, it would be open up. And so those guys would be able to go compete against uh, one another with him and Gerard. On your right, Chip. 
Charlie, um, who do you envision competing at middle linebacker right now? <coughs> With Edmund gone, who do you have penciled in? Well, right now, uh, Chip is going to be Santos because uh, uh, Santos last year was Ed uh, Edmonds backup, and he played a lot, a lot of football. But you know, that's a position right now on defense that's very critical for us because you you lose Hicks, you lose Edmund, you know, two guys that had a lot of starts and played a lot of football, and and so that's going to be key at that position because that middle linebacker is, is the glue of the defense, and and it's got to be someone who can step up and go lead the defense. And then you look at Pete Jenkins, you look at Tim Cole. You, you have some, some, some bodies there, but it's just mainly who's going to go step up. And right now, that middle backer position is Santos. On your left over here, Mike. <clears throat> Charlie, of, of the 22 starting spots in offense and defense, how, how many would you estimate that you have a good feeling of who's, who's in control there? Well, if you look at the 22 on uh, uh, offense, I mean, let's start with the 11, you know, the 22 on offense and defense. Let's look at the 11 on, uh, on offense. You know, at, at wide receiver, um, you know, you got Marcus Johnson back, DeJay is back, you know, two guys that, that has played a lot. You know, I'm just saying, I'm just going by just people who have played. Uh, you know, the, your offensive line, you, you get Hutch back, you get Doyle back, you get Seth Flowers back. You know, you, you get your line, your, your line, you, you get you get back and the guys that have played a lot of football, you know, the quarterback position with Tyrone coming back there. And, uh, you know, running back, you get Jay Gray back at running back. And uh, but I'm just you know I'm sitting there just uh, trying to just think of names and, and the guys that that is uh, played for us. You know, tight end position you lose Swain, but back played some. So you, you look in there. So uh, with offensively, you, you got a, gr a good uh, group of guys that played a lot. Now it's just a matter of just a piecing it together. And that's and that's his job as a coaching staff to make sure that we put the the players in the position where they can be successful. And then a defense. You know, you, you look up front, you're Ridgeway, uh, you know, Tank is coming back off of an injury. You get Tank back. Boyette played a lot for us. Shiro came on late in the season to play. Nation Hughes uh, started. The key position, which I was just talking about, is the linebacker position. You know, Santos played a lot for us. Pete Jenkins played a lot. But they were going you know, to replace some really outstanding players because, you know, Malcolm Brown, you know, Sed Reed, uh, uh, Hicks, Edmonds, those guys are uh, digs. Those guys are going to be hard to replace, you know, because they played uh, played a lot. You know, in the secondary, your two safeties are back. Mm -hmm. And and then, uh, you know, your corner position, you got uh, Duke back now with uh, Sherrod coming back off of an injury. So it's, 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 a, it's a group, you know, you have bodies, you have guys that have played, but it's not, now it's about us as a coach, where we, we got to get, where we coach them and develop these players. And, that, and that's what we got to do a better job of developing the players that we have and, and, and building the confidence in them and just building it where where they understand that it's all about co competing, but it's also about working hard, but it's about improving each and every day. On your right, Anwar. <laughs> hey, Coach. Um, back to the quarterback. Um, how far behind uh, Tyrone Swoops is Gerard Hurd, would you say, at, around this time? And, and what does he have to do in order to get to a point where he kind of unseat a, a, a starter from last year? Well, I, I uh, you know, I, I spoke, la I talked to our team last night, and, and I said to them, I, I said that don't ever think because of a, a guy started last season that he can't be unseated as a starter. And so don't ever walk into a, 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 a situation thinking that, you know what, I can't go beat him out. Yes, if you work hard enough, you're going to go beat him out. Because I said, I'm not one of those guys who play games. If I think you're the best player, the best player is going to play. You know, as far as how far behind he is, I, I don't know that. You know, we're tweaking some things on offense where we're going to make it where, you know, you, you get two guys with uh, with athletic ability and let them go play. <clears throat> Charlie, you talked about uh, chemistry. Can that make players better or what's the balance between having the talent you want and then having that chemistry? You know what happens, Roger. If you have team chemistry, I just think it makes the whole team better because because now guys start believing and trusting in one another. And and what lack what's lacking when you don't have team chemistry is is, is all about you just see just the individualism there where guys it's all about their individual talent because they don't really think about no one but themselves. So we just got to build it where it becomes a team because all the when you look at the teams that go win, it, it's all about the team. And, is, and the individual's a part of it, but then your individual talent is able to come out because you're having so much success as a team. And that's what we haven't had. We, we just got to have success as a football team.
Hey, Coach. Uh, you got an update on Darius James? <laughs> has he been has he been with the with the team or what's going on with him? <laughs> yes, D James, um, uh, Alex. He had his, the knee injury, so he's going through that, and he's uh, has some work to do academically. Okay. <clears throat> Charlie, what impression has Malik Jefferson made on you so far, and <clears throat> what do you need to see from him this spring to trust that he can you know play right away for you? Well, the only time I really have seen him so far is during winter conditioning. And you know he's an outstanding athlete, has a, a ton of athletic ability. And it's going to be fun just to see him once we get him out there Wednesday, let him run around. Then we don't be, won't be able to put the pads on until Saturday. And then you can really just see just where he is. But just watching him, you just knowing that you have an outstanding athlete with, who can do a lot, who's going to be able to do a lot of things. Coach, a lot of JUCO guys coming in this year. We're going to get a chance to see him in spring ball. Uh, but how, what are your plans for really incorporating him into the team this spring? Well, I think with the JUCO guys, you, you look at uh, Tristan uh, Hodges, and uh, I think I have three, don't I? Vassar. Va uh, Vassar. So the, those guys are all linemen, and what we're trying to do is just build depth at our at the at line position. So they are going to get a chance to compete. And the thing about it is, is is that was a need for us. You know, I'm not big on junior colleges, but I think that when we have to, you need a need. There's guys that can come in, and and you feel like that they can help you at that position. Then it, you have to go out and just make sure that you can get get them within your program. And what's been great is they're here right now, so they've been working. So now that they've worked, they understand what. They is expected. On your left side. Uh, Charlie, uh, you lost your best leaders off of defense primarily. How concerned are you about that area of the defense? And I know it's hard to simulate leadership, but who are some of the guys you see uh, taking a step forward in that department? You know, it, it, when you look at it, said you have to win on defense. You got to play great defense, and you know we we did. We lost some leaders with Diggs. We lost some leader with Hicks. You know, Edmonds, uh, uh, Big Malcolm, uh, M Malcolm Brown, Cedric Reed. You know, guys that have played a lot of football and started a lot of uh, a lot of games for us. And, and the replacement is, is going to be hard because because you look at those guys they've been in the program a long time so now you know you, you look at it and with the, with the guys that need to come you know need to come through for us and step up you know we're talking about a Santos who's been here a Pete Jenkins who who's been here Tim Cole who's been here even Tank and the good thing about Tank. <clears throat> Is that you know with the injury he's able to bounce back and once he comes back you know get fully recovered he's going to be a guy that we're really going to look for for leadership and and even you know you look in the back end you know Duke has played a lot of football for us but you know guys need to step up and and it's just that the the leadership within the defense it, it, we have to develop those guys and, and find those leaders. Stay on the left, Mike. <clears throat> Charlie, do you think that by the time the spring game gets here, the middle of April, you'll have an idea of who's going to start the season opener at quarterback, or do you think that competition's going to go through this summer? Well, you like to say, that, you know, by then you will have a good feel. Because you know you, you get the practices in, and then you know guys uh, be able, you know, if a guy can separate himself, you know. And, and I just had this conversation, and, and I was t t telling our players, don't be afraid to separate yourself from the other players. And I said that w w what has happened is, is that guys don't want to go make a move, and there's nothing wrong with it, you know. And sometimes, you know, you can't always bring your friends with you, so you can't bring them with you. Okay, you have your teammates, you can't always bring them with you, but there can be a separation. And when you have that separation from guys. Then you could really know, okay, this guy here really won't improve. He wants to be an outstanding player. So don't worry about it if you have to separate. So many times we act like we're going to hurt somebody's feelings. It's nobody's feelings hurt. You're going to be the best player you want to be. If he doesn't want to come with you, just leave him behind, and then we'll get somebody to come with you. We'll get that done as a staff. Are you right, Chip? <clears throat> Charlie, can you give us an injury update, guys who will be missing part or all the spring? Yeah, Chip, let me think about that because, you know, uh, mm, should have brought that sheet with me. Uh, yeah, I sent it out to you because I just can't, really can't think of them all right away. On your left, Ryan. Charlie. Three new assistant coaches. Do, do you feel like what you got now is better 
suited to the, what you had maybe a year ago to get this program going forward? I'm not, I'm not going to say they're better because I think, you know, every coach has something to bring to the table. But you look at Jay, you know, coming up from Oklahoma, being in this conference, knowing this conference, you know, and, and the work that he's uh, has done speaks for itself. You know, you look at Brick, you get, you get a guy from the Southeastern Conference, but a guy has recruited this state, has coached in this state, who understands and knows this program. And then you, you look at uh, what Jeff Trailer uh, did when he was at Gilmer and, and uh, the success that he had. And I, I just look at it like this, you know, with, with those two guys on offense, is going to help the offense because they, they know what we're looking for. And then with defense, you know, uh, Brick has done a good job of just coming in and understanding what we're looking for. And will Trailer be your full-time special teams coach, or is that still gone? No, no, Trailer will run the special teams. And, and the reason why and it's just that uh, with him coaching the tight ends, you know, it's a position that, you know, you play don't play a lot you know, with a tight end position. But with uh, – where Chris having to coach the secondary and the uh, special teams was tough on him because now you're looking at a guy he's got to go get ready for a special teams meeting, but and then go coach the secondary. So uh, Jeff will, will handle the special teams. <clears throat> On your right hand, Mark. Hey, Coach, you know, last offseason, you took away certain things from the guys and said they had to earn it, whether it's the decals on the helmets or they can't step on the logo. Are you going to do that again starting in the spring and make them kind of hit the reset button and earn things? Well, it's always you, you always have to hit the reset button. And, and there's guys that they understand what we're looking for. And, you know, when it, last year we took away the logos. There won't be a logo on the helmet uh, this spring. So we, we'll go back through that again. But it's, it's all about just building the pride and restoring the pride back within this program. On the left, Brian. Charlie, where are you guys at special teams-wise, and, and specifically punter? And, and of the new assistants, are they expected to have big roles in special teams? What I what I do with uh, the, the second part of that question. What I do with special teams is that every coach is involved. I'm even involved in special teams. So uh, uh, Jeff runs it, but each coach coaches a phase of it. You know, like if you take the punt team, it's broken down. Somebody has the left side, someone has the right side. Somebody's personal protector, and someone has the punter. You know, with the kickoff return team, somebody has the right side or the front forward. You know, somebody has the other back back end. But every coach is always involved because I, I just don't like coaches to be standing around because most of the players, it's a lot of the big skill and skill. So those coaches need to be coaching their players. So that way, uh, Jeff is responsible for the overall pitcher, but each coach is, is totally involved. And and then with the punter uh, situation right now, Becker and Rose well, are the two guys who will be competing at that position. You know, it, it's a position where we got to find this spring who's going to be the punter. You know, and, and you look at Nick Rose, uh, you know, last year, you know, he's, he's done a good job where he's had enough resources around me now because he's been talking with Tuck, he's been talking to Phil. So, uh, you know, I just look for him to get better and improve. <clears throat> Back middle, John. Coach, do you have a sense from your players that they're tired of not being the big dog and are willing to do what it takes to, to get back there? I, I think they are, and because and because if you you look at it and you think about it, you know when I, when I made when I was talking to them about that, you know it, I think that it kind of stings now because I, I said to them, I said, you think about this, you go home for break last week, and I said I know you guys get tired of questions because I get tired of them. What's wrong with the program? What's happening within the program? And I, and I said, but you know at some point we got to do something about it. You know we we can we can make any excuse, and that's why I got this shirt. No excuses. You know, we can't. There's no excuse. I mean, I mean, the reason why we are where we are right now is because we haven't worked hard enough and we haven't done what we needed to go do. But I, I think that it, it's, it's kind of burning, and I, and I love to talk about it because I love to burn them every day with it. And I, wa I want them to feel it, you know, because every day I come with something, but I want them to feel it and want them to understand that, you know, b being mediocre is not acceptable. You know, I, I tell them all the time, I can go get anybody to do this. But but we, we at some point, we got to change it and we got to get going. On your left, Bob? Coach, what impact do you think DeJay Johnson can have on this team this year, and how far has he come from the first day you, you met him? You know, Bob, I, had to, I, you know, I wish I had some wood here to knock on, but my man, he has, he has come a million miles. And, you know, I, I, I think that it, it was probably uh, July, you know, a year ago, and, and uh, we had a talk. 
And that, I think at that time I had suspended him like five or six games. And, and I said to him, I said, you, you got to prove to me you want to be here. And, and at that time he said to me, he said, I tell you what, I said, I would not be in your, he said it to him, he said, I would not be in your doghouse again. And that's why I hit this, I'm hoping that, that, that he sticks to it. But he what an explosive player. And he has so much ability. And he's one of those guys that you can get the ball to him in the open field. He can make a guy miss and take it. And, and, you know, and I tease him all the time now. I said, you haven't made a play since the Oklahoma game on the punt return two years ago. When am I going to see DeJay? And he always said to me, when you give me my number back. I said, but I love seeing you in 23. I think it's better than number four. But he, uh, but he, he, can, be, he can help us and he can do so many things with the ball in his hands and just fun to watch. Left, Dennis. <clears throat> Coach, you were talking about the cohesion. How different is going into this spring just between your staff and between the players getting to know you guys and what you expect? How different does it feel going in and do you think it'll be more productive? It, it's so much different now, Dennis, because like you said, now we're a year into it, so we kind of know who we are and, and kind of know the players and, and what you're dealing with. And, and, and now you just understand, you know, sometimes you walk into a program and you just really, you know, when you're dealing with the players, you, you really don't understand them because sometimes you feel like, okay, since they're here, you expect so much because so much is expected. And then when it doesn't happen, it kind of, you know, I, I get frustrated because I'm sitting there saying, okay, you guys, do you understand where you are? You know, I said that, some, you know, this is no longer a destination. I mean, we're, we're not here, you, okay, you guys got done. It's no longer a destination here. We will earn everything we get from here out. But, you know, just being here a year, year now, knowing what we're dealing with and the players that we have, it, it's so much easier because now you know the personalities, guys. You know how to work. You know what is expected. You, you know what you're looking for each and every day now. You're right, William. <clears throat> Going back to the wide receiver's <laughs> position, you know, you lost your two best players uh, from last season. Where is your confidence level with that group right now? Well, you, you lose uh, Ship and you lose Harris, and, and you look at the year that Harris has, and you like to see some guy who can come on like he did and, and just provide, uh, you know, the leadership that he provided that position. But you got Marcus, you got DeJay, you, you know, you, you got some just some young players that, that has a lot of ability. It's about them now just coming in and just stepping up. On your left, Kirk. Uh, with uh, the way you finished the season the last two games and season ticket prices going up, why should the fan base feel excited about this team and you think it's got enough to be a winning program this year? Well, you know, it, it's, it's all about just work. And then I think this, that when we, when we get through spring practice and we continue to work, then, Kirk, I think that, you know, the, the fan base, you know, what it is, it's the University of Texas. And, and you're an alum of this university. This is your university. And, and we haven't, you know, last season, we didn't do a great job of representing this university where it should be represented. But, you know, because of, uh, you know, one season, I don't think that you say, hey, you know, it, it's time for me to jump off that bandwagon because we all represent represent this university and it's an unbelievable university it will always continue to be so to support you, you have to support it because that's what the players are expecting and, and that's and we all want more we didn't get what we wanted last season but you know every year is a different year so it's time to write a new chapter into to, to this book and just see what happens <clears throat> on your right Alex hey coach um as far as the back seven on defense do you think that um Malik Jefferson, will he be given an opportunity to come in and contribute early? And also, as far as I think you mentioned Evans and, and Duke coming back, you seem pretty well set at safety. What are you guys thinking as far as the nickel position right now and who's going to be competing for that? Well, if you look at the back seven, so, you know, you're talking about Santos, you're talking about uh, Pete uh, Jenkins, or Malik, or uh, Nashawn uh, Hughes. You know, it's a, it's a good group of guys, and, and Malik will always be able to compete. You know, all of them are going to be given that opportunity to, to compete at that position. You know, you're right, you, you said with, with Dylan Haynes, and, uh, you know, you, you said with him and Jason at the safety position, and then you go, go cornerback with Duke and Sherrod, but there's still a bunch of young talent. There's Bonnie still sitting there, there's, there's Jermaine Roberts sitting there, you know, there's Vaccaro sitting there, there's, there's guys, Colbert, you know, we, we have uh, guys that, Eccles, you, you have guys that have played, and there's, it's a, you, you have a good group sitting there, so it's now it's, it's about just, like I said, and it's our job, where we make sure that we put the guys in the right position where they, where they have a chance to go be successful. Back left, Roger. 
Charlie, how long did that bowl game burn with you? And, and as a head coach, do you have to let that go, or do you let that feeling linger a little bit? It, you know what, Roger? It burns, and it, it it will continue to burn. And I think it's going to burn till I get to my first game next season. Yeah, it, I, I guess that what burns you more than anything is that when you go and compete, and you feel like that we didn't compete at the level that we should. That and it's a coach, and it's my fault. It's my fault as a head coach that that didn't happen. But it it, it burns because because you want success, and and you want the seniors to leave out the right way, and you want them to have success when you walk out. And and it's it, it's been a while, and I think you know I, I was thinking. That has been a long, I don't know when the last time I have I've ever been you know as an assistant been a part of a losing season. I think it was when I was at South Carolina. Me and Coach Holt's first year. We only we didn't win a game, but uh, it, that's been a long time. But um, it's it's just that when you when you think that you would go out and you would play hard and you would go compete and that guys would take nothing for granted, then it you just feel like that you know what that's what it's, it's all about competing and, 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 and guys playing at the level that they expected to go play at and we didn't do that and, and we, you get embarrassed and we got embarrassed and, it, and that's what just burns me more than anything and that's why it's just so hard for me to, it's just so hard for me to get over it and you know and I, and I count myself you know sometimes I gotta slow down because you catch yourself you know, during the winter condition, I would just blow the whistle and I would say something to the team just because I just, you know, it was just burning at me then. And then when they wasn't working, it really burned me. And then I just said, okay, let's just go back and just, why don't we just go replay that game right now and just, that's what we're doing, just go replay it because that's what we're doing right now. And, but you would think, and that's why I said to them, I said, at some point within our program, we have to understand that it's not acceptable. This, this, and then just said that our players, our coaches, it's not acceptable. This is not who we are, and it should never be who we are. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, Charlie. Following up on the receiver position a little bit, is Marcus Johnson in a position where he kind of grasps the urgency, like John Harris did last year, and can make a, a leap forward this season? Well, you look at Marcus, he has all the tools. It, it's not it's about him, you know, j j just stepping up and, and going to go do it. And, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, two years ago he had a good year, but it, it's just kind of gotten lost where, where he needs to be one of those guys. And I, and I said it to him. I said, you have gotten lost. And, and I expect, you know, I said, I, I watched Doran Leonard w work, you know, and he, he comes to work. And I said, but you, it should never be like from the DeJays, the Doran Leonard's, to the Foreman's, that's it, Lorenzo Joe. Those guys, you, you, I expect you to be a step ahead of those guys. And, and, and that's what it has to be for you. You have to be, you've been in this program now, you understand it, you have to be a step ahead. And that's what I, I was talking about, just the separation. Don't be afraid to separate yourself. You know, guys, don't be afraid of success. What, what's wrong with it? You know, yeah, anybody can hang back and anybody can just stay in the pile. And, and that's all right that, you know, we can just hang out in a pile. But, I mean, who's going to be the guy to step away from that pile? I said John Harris did it last year. He wasn't afraid. And they, but he was, he stepped away from it. So who's going to step away from that pile? And are we just going to say just this piled up, you know, group? There were no one that separates it, and then we go back and go go get embarrassed again, like we did our last game. <clears throat> You're right, Jeff. Charlie, kind of a twofold question on the run game. You have got you know a couple of freshman linemen in the spring in the group you redshirted last year. If those guys do emerge, would you not hesitate to play those guys number one and number two? Now that Jay Gray is a full year removed from the injury. And what are you expecting from him now that he's had this long recovery? Yeah, yes, we do expect to play those linemen, and, and you can't be afraid to play them because you, you look at it, you just got to go play the best players and not, not be afraid of it. And, and they just come in and compete, uh, you know, because you, you look at uh, the guys that like Garrett Thomas and, and Connor Williams, two freshmen that have come in and work really hard. And, and it's amazing just to watch them work because they don't even say nothing. They just go about their business and do what you ask them to do, you know, just like Tristan and Hodges and Vassar and they just you know, Malik they just do what they're, you ask them to do but then you look at Jay Gray you know I, I think that with Jay Gray is it, our offensive line we're going to have to block people and I think if you block people for him he's one of those guys that can open up and he can run and he don't mind running behind his pads but we, we just got to do a better job at the point of attacking and at the line of scrimmage on the left Brian 
Charlie, going back to talking about how the ball loss hurt, you know, now that the senior class that is gone, you know, everyone in this program now, no one has experienced championship level success, right? There's no one in the locker room that can say, hey, when we did this, right? By all accounts, this freshman class coming in has what you're looking for in terms of attitude, mm -hmm. right? But for the guys that are here, how do you pull it out of them if, if, it, if it may not be there? You, you know what it is, Brian? It, it's in all of us. It, it is. It, you know, it, it's in all of us. It's just a matter of us as a coaching staff pulling it out. And you're right. They, even though they haven't experienced it, they can experience it. But it's going to take hard work, and it's going to take discipline. It's going to take you know, the desire, the determination. It's going to take all of those things. But it can be done. It, it is just, it's just a matter of us as a coaching staff. And, and I told our coaches, this is probably going to be one of those years where we're going to have to go coach, and we're just going to see how good of coaches we really are. This is going to be one of those years. And, and I said, what's, what's wrong with it? It's great that you have a challenge, but don't be afraid of the challenge. So you guys can't be afraid of it because if the players see that we're afraid of it, then they'll back away, and we can't allow them to back away. But, you know, the, the amazing thing about this group, and you're right, they haven't experienced it, but the, anything you say, they kind of they, they, they hold on to it now. So it's almost like you got to be careful what you say to this group because they're going to hold on to it because this group is listening because it, it, it hasn't happened for them. So they're going to listen to everything you say. Stay over here on the left. John, you brought up a couple times the whole idea of being afraid to separate yourself. Have you seen that reluctance from either Tyrone or Gerard? And do you think that the competition that Tyrone is going to have this spring, which he didn't have last year, will, will help him kind of do that? I, I tell you what I did with Tyrone in, in the winter conditioning. What we do is we separate. We break the team down by skill, big skill, and lineman. So Tyrone is in the big skill group, you know, quarterbacks and linebackers. So I took him. And I said, no, you, you, I'm tired of watching you in the big seal. You're going to go run with the skill guys. And when I placed him in that group, didn't back away at all. I mean, you see a big guy like that, and he's winning most of the races. I mean, he's, he's beating our skill guys. And so he didn't back away at all. So when Gerard saw me move him, he automatically moved on his own because I turned around and I looked, and he says, I'm going, I'm going with the skill guys. But but you so you look at two guys and the leadership. It, when when guys see those two, see that position working, then guys understand the sense of urgency. Because if those two guys are willing to do it, then why don't everybody else come along with them? Are you right, Coach? Um, with the quarterback competition, how much of a factor does leadership play? Do you measure that as much as you measure <laughs> skill set and talent? Oh, they, because at that position, you got to have leadership because you think about it, that ball's in that guy's hand. Um, if he's on the field, it's every snap. So you had to have the leadership. And then he's got to be provide where, where guys understand, can he bring the group with him? You know, and if he, is he willing to bring the group? Not so much he's willing, he's going to have to bring them with him. But will they follow him? And then that's the thing about leadership. If you can change someone and bring them with you, then you have a chance. And then can, can we get this group with these two quarterbacks? Can we get the team to follow them? Max. Charlie, for all your questions this spring, what are you confident about what this particular team can do and what maybe it will hang its hat on this fall? You, you know what, Matt, I, and, and I've just been so pleased just the way they've worked in the winter conditioning is just how hard they've worked and, and uh, them not uh, – backing away, you know, they, they've went to work and they, they, they've not backed away from it at all. But it, but it's been a good, a good thing about it. So with that, you know, you always feel like you have a chance because now, you know, when you look at just them understanding what is the expectation, and I do, and someone asked a question earlier, do, do I, you know, when we was talking about do you see it happening where they're getting tired of, of not being a big dog, you see it happening now. <clears throat> You're right. Coach, uh, you know, last year in the, in the spring, uh, Tyrone struggled, and you joked, I think, about moving him to tight end. And then his last two games, when he had against TCU and Arkansas, those were bad performances by him. So, what are you going to need to see from him in the offseason that's going to give you confidence to maybe have him as your starting quarterback going forward? Well, right now, and Warren, I mean, the only chance that we have is is, is, is two on scholarship is him and, and Gerard. 
and and so you, you know I, you look at him in the spring you're right he he uh, he didn't get accomplished what we needed to get accomplished but you know but but it's all about putting him in the right system where he can have some success and you try to give him an opportunity to go be successful you know I, I look at that TCU game and and you, you know what not only he didn't play well I mean nobody played well I mean we didn't block anybody we didn't in defense we didn't stop anybody you know it was just a total but you know the thing that looks bad for him he is a quarterback and and you see the mistakes that are so glaring for him but you know we forget about some of the other things that happened in that game then you look at the Arkansas game you know you, you we look at an offense that netted 59 total yards of offense so you know I know it's a quarterback but I mean there's there's an offensive line there's running backs there's wide receivers there's a lot of things that are happening so it, it is more of you know what? What we got to do is, is build a confidence, not only with with him, but with Gerard, and just feel where we feel comfortable enough that these guys can go lead this football team. On your left, Brian. Charlie, what does the market look like right now for a transfer quarterback? And do you guys have a cutoff point where you got to get a guy in by a certain time, or you're not going to bring one in? Well, it's, it's just so hard because you, you don't know what's out there, and the guys don't ever make a decision till the end of spring practice. So you don't you don't can't go courting anybody saying, "Hey, we need you." But you can't do that because you don't know what's out there. Because you, you can't, you know, as long as this young man's enrolled in another school, you can't have no communication with him at all. In the back. Coach, would you consider a dual quarterback rotation or do you expect a clear leader to emerge? Well, if it gets to it and we're in a game and both of them, if we feel like they're even, we'll get, we'll go, we'll play them both. And, and I think that, you know, it would help it, because then, you know, one guy understands, hey, at this point he's going to go in the game and he's going to play. But if, if it's even, you're going to have to play both of them. You left center. Uh, Charlie, you had the luxury of having Malcolm Brown and Jay Gray last year. Are you comfortable <coughs> with Jay Gray in a workhorse role? And if not, what were some of the younger guys you're going to look at to take up some of that slack? Well, you know, you're right. Last year, you were able to have a um, uh, little Malcolm and Jay Gray. So now you got Jay Gray, you got Deontay Foreman, who, who's a big, powerful guy, and, and then he can run behind his pads. And then, uh, you know, Catalan was a guy that we didn't get a ch you guys didn't get a chance to see because we uh, ended up redshirting him. But but you yeah, and then you know with the guys that we're bringing in, so it, I, I think that's a position that is, is going to be really solid for us. It's, it's just you know with uh, with Jay Gray, you just want to see him. You know, I want to see him have success because he works so hard. Got time for two last ones. Start with Chip on the right. Charlie, can you tell us a little bit more about the offense? You obviously had them look at some other other teams. I think you know Ohio State, <coughs> Auburn, Arizona, North Carolina. What what do you think <coughs> the offense is going to look like? Well, you know, I, I look at this state, Chip, and, and I would say, you know, pr probably 98% of this state is a spread offense. And, and so you, you sit during the recruiting process, because what happened during recruiting, you know, everybody wants to know, hey, coach, what type of offense you're going to run. And so the key players that you need to, to really recruit, those guys are the ones that are in the spread offense, so that's what they're looking for. And, and so what, what we did is that we, we looked at it is if 98% of the offenses in this state are from that background. So when we bring players into our program, what, let's not change them. And it's not so much, you, I think that where you are, you just got to do what everyone else is doing and, and not so, but you still got to, you know, find a way to go be, stay physical and go run the football. So it's not like we're going to be one of those teams that jump out there now. And I tell you guys, we ain't going to jump out there and throw the ball every snap now, okay? So you're not going to see the ball being thrown 60 times in a game, all right? And I hope the score is in 60 to 59 either. Because defensively, I don't think I can live with that at all. But, um, you know, it's just that, you know, with the athleticism that we have at some positions, you know, you try to find a way to get the ball into Jay's hand. You try to find a way to get the ball in the Marcus hand. You try to, you know, spread it out and get hand the ball off and hoping that you can create the big plays. And we just, we wanted an explosive team. We, we didn't create the big plays. You know, uh, you, you look at uh, some of our games, you look at the, the low scoring, but you, you're going to have to score and you got to, but you got to generate, you got to generate points and, 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 and it's, it's all about taking what you have and using it to your advantage and, and seeing that 
you, that you can be successful doing it. Now, defensively, it, it's all about it still, you know, you still got to go play defense. You got to go stop people. But you know what? You know, just making sure just on offense that you have to, you have two athletes, a quarterback, you know, they're good enough where they can throw the ball. They're good enough where if you had to pull it down, they can go run the football. But it, it's just, you got to take advantage of what you have. Last question on your left, Kirk. Uh, Charlie, do you think you could contend for the Big 12 this year, or do you think you might be surviving and look at 2016? <laughs> I, just let me get through this spring, and I'll be able to answer that question. <laughs> okay, thanks, guys. Thank you, Joe.